Here's another problem that's going to feel kind of different, but it's also about the chain rule. I have two functions, f and g, presented graphically. So that means that we really want to um, be able to just use this graphical information. You don't want to say, oh gosh, what's the function? What is this sine x, is this cosine x? What's the algebra? It's not an algebraic problem. And I want to use the, the chain rule ideas to, to analyze this. So the way the book would say it, um, and you'll have a problem like this, is let's define a function, let's say w. I don't want to use u because I like using u as, if I can, as the intermediate variable, like the, the output of the, the inside function. So let's say w uh, of x is f of g of x, and v of x is g of f of x. We'll analyze these separately, but it's be able to, good to be able to do them both orders and to remember that the order matters a huge amount when you compose functions. Okay, So the book would ask, and I would ask, Here's two different def two, two different notations. One is a lot of writing, but it doesn't require us to name this function. It just says take f of g of x. That's a function. Take the derivative of it, and then I want to get a numerical answer. I'm not going to be able to get a uh, an algebraic formula out of this anyway. So I'm just going to say if I plug in x equals zero, and that's what this notation means. Take this function and plug in x equals zero. It's, it's called the evaluation bar. It's a handy little notation. What is that derivative? The book tends to like this because it's less writing. Once you've set this up, you can say, okay, what that really means is take w, that's this function, differentiate it, plug in zero. Okay? And in a minute, we'll do this one as well. Okay? But let's see what happens here. So, what is this going to be? Um, the derivative of f composed with g, we just write down the chain rule and we just have to carefully see what how the process works. It's the derivative of the outer evaluated at the inner and now we're not going to do this for a general x, we're going to do this for x equals 0. And so we just plug in 0 everywhere. So it's the derivative, it's f prime of g of x with x plugged in to be 0 times g prime of x with again x plugged in to be 0. So I'm going to need to do uh, a, a, a few things here. I'm going to need g prime of 0, which is a slope. I'm going to need f prime, but it's really, really important that it's not at 0. It's at g of 0. So I'm going to need g of 0 as well. So this is interesting. I need the slope and the height of g, and I'm only going to need the slope of f. This is very analogous to something that happened with the bug problem, is we needed to know how fast the bug was going and where the bug was at the given time. And we also needed to know how fast the temperature was changing at that point, but we never actually needed to know the actual temperature at that point to figure out whether the bug was getting hotter or colder and by how much. And that's the analog here. So let's just do two of those three steps. G of 0 is 3. So I'm going to end up evaluating f prime at 3, not at 0. And then g prime of 0, well, that's a line. It's going from 3 down to 3. It's this line of slope minus 1. Now, f prime of 3, aha, 3, that's this guy. The slope there, in one unit over, it's going two units up, so that's a 2. So 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So there's, actually, I can move it over. So there's one of the calculations. Now, real quick, we'll finish it up with another, just a very similar calculation. We define this other function by saying, no, I'm going to take f as the input for uh, as the first function and then stick the output of that into g, take the derivative of that, and let's just say at x equals 6, just to be interesting. The book's uh, shorter notation for that is once you've got this shorthand for, for g of f, then it's very easy, just it's a v prime of 6. So that's going to be g prime of f of 6 times f prime of 6. And, okay, so I'm going to do two of those steps. f of 6 is 5, so I'm going to need to figure out the slope of g at 5. And that was just not something you can predict until you do that calculation. And then f prime of 6, I can just go ahead and do directly. f prime of 6, uh, oh yeah, here it is. f prime of 6, this is going down one unit for every two, so that's a 1 half. A minus 1 half, ah. Uh -huh almost made a mistake there. Okay. Then g prime of 5, that's going up one unit and over one unit, because remember, we're plugging in 5 here. And so that's 1 times minus 1 half is minus 1 half. 
Okay. So uh, there's a book problem that's very much like that. Take a look at it, and uh, we'll see how you do.